good thing. That's not a bad thing. You know, even if I disagreed with 99% of what you were saying, I agree with why you believe in what you're doing. I agree with many things you say, but what I really respect is that you're willing to put yourself into the center of that argument and make that because that is what our country is supposed to be about. Our country is supposed to be about innovation, supposed to be about intelligence. We're supposed to be the, even uh, what was a uh, old Bush, uh, we're the, the beacon on the hill. Okay, well, are we the beacon on the hill? Well, we should be. Instead, we become a beacon for torture and empire and lies and propaganda. How did we go from, on average, putting out you know, the, the, the most informed people, the most patents, innovation, trailblazing? I mean, the world said, wow, America's it, to now the world says, man, this is where the evil comes from. I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> you know, you can make an argument that if you want to put the evil in quotations, that the evil's been there all along. You know, we, we engaged in slave trade at some point. At some point, we, we, you know, we took advantage of the Native Americans. We broke treaties. You know, as you said, we haven't been perfect. We're a rolling big ball of you know, dust like peanuts, you know, like Linus, you know. Um, I think that's it. I think it's that we've had, we've been good and evil. And because we've been powerful, when we do shine, it's wonderful. But when we're dark, it's very, very bad. Yeah, I think it's a dark time. Um, and, and I think... Uh, you know, as somebody who listens, you know, uh, what we all need to do is we need to start looking at what success looks like. You know, you use the term info war, you know, right? So what is, what is victory in the info war? Right now, at some point, just resisting seems like victory because there's so little dissent. <laughs> it's shocking. If you and I could go back in a time machine to the 1960s when people were protesting what they were protesting, that, 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 uh, generation would be shocked at how little dissent there is right now. What are we in? That? Nine wars? Seven wars? Yeah. Well, drones? Well, 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 proxy wars, it's like 14, yeah. Okay. And, and, and Drones in 11 countries? I mean, where is this sort of dissent? And particularly, I, I would say, from the artistic community. You know what I mean? And I'm including myself in this uh, 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 criticism. Where is the artistic reaction? In the 1960s, you had Neil Young, Ohio, and you had these great protest songs. Blowing in the Wind was a protest song. Where is the artistic response? It's almost like there's a giving up, but, but as you- No, no, but I would say this, Alex, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you know, there's, there, there, is a, there is a relationship that exists between performer and an audience, or you know, a, a, a singer in the song, right? At some point, and this is where I, I'm trying to answer your question, there isn't the hunger in the audience for that message. You understand? I could make an album of protest songs. There's not an audience that wants to hear that. In fact, oftentimes when I've used, like, say, my Twitter account to lodge a protest or lodge a point, um, I get this response back that says, just be quiet and entertain. So the role of the entertainer as a social icon or uh, an agent for social change has been diminished. And I don't think that's by accident. <laughs> Because, because the people in the late 60s, like Neil Young, like John Lennon, they had a tremendous amount of power with the counterculture and with the youth. And maybe there's a reason there that the people like that have been pushed aside to where that message is no longer uh, necessary or required. <clears throat> a lot of people feel like, don't tell me what to do. That's sort of the general vibe in the, in the, in the culture. But then I say, okay, if, if, if you don't want me to tell you what to do, that's totally fine. But what do you stand for? And most people don't have an answer. That's what I'm saying. At least in your case, you're saying, I stand for liberty. And you'll interpret your own version of that. And I have a version that's different than yours, right? But at least we stand for the common idea of liberty. I mean, I'm, I'm a beneficiary of, of one of the great countries in, in the history of the world. I'm some weirdo that figured out how to do something, and there was a system in place that allowed me to rise up and do it. If I'd grown up in Soviet Union or whatever, I probably would be working on a dock, right? So I appreciate that part of it. But it's weird to me when you have an audience that's basically turned that, that social icon into nothing more than a prop that's like a wind-up toy. We talked about that, the change in the people, that, that, you know, that state of just a malaise or a type of sleeping narcolepsy. I repeat to the viewers out there the experience of the way people have changed, because I've seen this in the last 10 years, the way fans have changed. Well, <clears throat> I've really noticed that um, social networking, uh, you, know, uh, you know, those types of things, Facebook, that's become sort of people's pride, okay? So little things you see, 
uh, I used to sign a lot of autographs, sign almost no autographs now. Now it's a picture because the social uh, uh, approval comes from, look, I met this celebrity, here's the picture to prove it. It's not a physical document, it's a, it's a virtual document. Well, the same thing happens in your interactions with people. I'm no longer a real person most of the time. When they talk to me, it's kind of like, <laughs> you know what I mean? They've grown up with you, and, but you're sort of like, you're, you're, as, you're as real as this table or something. It's like, there's this- Well, to repeat your words, you said before it was, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Corrigan, but I really like you to sign this. I really you know, like your work. You're like, hey, Billy, let's do a photo. It, 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 and my wife said this years ago, just in my own interactions. She's like, wow, it's like they know you, and it's like automatic. It's like, hey, and they just grab on you. Yeah, but it's the, it's, it's, it's the downside of the virtual reality. You know, somebody could sit there and watch 24 hours a day of my band or me talking on YouTube. So there's a there's a level of familiar, familiarity that comes with that. But then there's also this degrading of, uh, let's call it, uh, social structure. I grew up in a, uh, a world that you, 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 if you didn't know somebody, you, you referred to them as sir, you were formal at first, and all that's been stripped away. Now, that's not a huge indication of something. No, but it bums me out. When I say sir to people, they act like, I'm almost lower class that I'm groveling to them instead of, no, I'm giving the respect because I want it. Yeah, it, it, there's an erosion of uh, respect for the family, an erosion for the, of the formality of life, which I never saw as a bad thing. And I mean, like people will say, oh, what do you watch on TV? I said, I don't watch anything except a few sports because I can't stand to watch the American male be uh, uh, whatever they've turned the American male to. Castrated. That's a good word for it. I can't, I can't stand it. I mean, I just can't watch that anymore. Well, they put that image out. I mean, that's in the documents on purpose. And, and I don't cover that enough, but I think that's one of the hearts of their system is to turn women, you know, they claimed it was feminism, but now it's total objects. Dude, don't you think it's weird just to bring up a current event? Um, all of a sudden, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm certainly no fan of Rush Limbaugh. But again, I live in a society that's supposed to respect free speech. Okay, so that's his free speech, right? All of a sudden, there's articles... Uh, Gloria Steinem, fire Limbaugh, you know, now I heard you once talk about her and, and I did the research and there's all that stuff about her and the CIA and dating Kissinger and you're like, not trying to empower women, but get them as taxpayers and take their kids. It's cold blooded. I, I don't have that. I mean, I don't, I, I don't do the research like you do, so I don't know that. But, but I'm saying is it's funny to me how these people pop up in the narrative all of a sudden when there's an agenda. You know what I mean? Oh, you're right. And, yeah. and, and, and you're wise enough, and I've learned over time, to see beyond the narrative that's presented. The surface. Because the surface is usually not the story that they want told. And, and that's where um, the Bill O'Reilly's and the Rush Limbaugh's don't realize they're, they're just co cogs in a much bigger system. And, and of course, they amassed tremendous wealth. And yeah, they promote Limbaugh because he fits in, but now they're wanting to get rid of him. Breitbart dies. They're trying to arrest Rupert Murdoch right now. Mm -hmm. They're going, and I predicted because I could see the move. Mm -hmm. And I said, watch, purges are going to start. And there is a purge against kind of the old right. They want just one big, weird, fake left thing that's launching wars, uh, erasing liberty, but calling itself the left. Which lends legitimacy to the old left that this new corporate board wants to cover itself with a mantle of the left, you see? Yeah. Yeah, well, I can say this much. I have noticed, um, you know, being a musician and growing up with a musical father, um, you know, you tend to be around a lot of liberal people, you know, and, and <laughs> drugs seems to be a part of that culture. But anyway, it's a liberal culture, right? Uh, and, and tend to mean, lean more left. Growing up in the 70s, that was a more left-leaning thing. It's very weird to me that the left has become the old right in terms of they don't want to hear ideas, they don't want any dissent, they don't want any questioning. And, that, and so when people say, well, what is your political leaning? I certainly can't identify with that left anymore because that's, I see that now as the party of be quiet and get in line. Well, that's it. You've got the mainline right wing that's just trying to suppress libertarians and people that want some semblance of freedom mm -hmm. and then haters. It's you know, a mix of people. And then you've got the left that is just totally sold out to trendiness and feeling like we're good and liberal, not actually standing up for what's right. Yeah, and, and here's where you, you would probably laugh, where I've been attacked the most for expressing any particular opinion, you know, outside of my world, um, is if I question in any way the global warming, climate change narrative. That is the most virulent attacks that I've seen from people if I question that. 
it is like, I, I mean, you think I was skinning babies alive. You know, how dare you attack the earth? <laughs> and all I'm saying is these are very serious issues worthy of open debate. You know, you, if you do research, uh, I do my own research. You're not my only informational source. I'll go on and I'll see uh, climate figures and this one scientist says this and this other. So you think, okay, it's not a settled issue, right? But in this guy's mind, it's a settled issue and I'm against the planet Earth because I dared question carbon taxes or something, you know? And, but I, the reason I'm bringing this up is not uh, to, to make a point about myself. The reason, it's, 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 it's amazing to me that where you have a lot of corporate money sitting behind something, how can a liberal class be that comfortable with that relationship? With the amount of money that's behind the green movements, how can that liberal class be that comfortable? Shouldn't they be going, well, why is this, you know, why is Monsanto standing behind me on this? That's where it gets a little fishy. For but look at the genius, Billy. Mm -hmm. They're, they're cutting down the rainforest, they're in genetic engineering everywhere, they're splicing all the species, they're building nuclear reactors, they're leaking everywhere. So of course the mega corporations who could care less are going to fund the left and take control of the green movement so it's not about all those real issues, it's about carbon dioxide that plants live off of that you exhale, that way they can tax it and then steal it as corporate welfare. What I found is the big mega corporations, they lobby for high taxes on the general public and on Main Street, because A, they're exempt from it, and B, they're getting it in bailouts and contracts. Mm -hmm. That's the genius, mm -hmm. and that's the, the scale on the dragon's belly where you can shoot the arrow, yeah. is that when you actually explain to someone who's well-meaning and cares about the environment, okay, um, 160 plus countries are exempt from carbon taxes, but Europe and the US and Australia and New Zealand aren't, and they're gonna build three power plants a week in China, but shut them down here. They're gonna have more carbon going out there. How, how does more carbon, and they, they don't know what to say. You're like, oh, so it's about a power grab. And then once you show people the backside of those tricks, right. then it's, it's all laid bare right there. But again, that's why the media that you've been on the inside of and seen wants to dumb it down. Because as long as they can say, Coney 2012, there's a bad guy in Africa invade, doesn't matter the actual invasion bill in Congress says every country in Africa. Mm -hmm. It just it just feels good, Billy. Yeah, that's why I think um, you know you know you're savvy in these matters. I'm certainly not, but I know enough about these systems to know to to look beyond the the narrative that's being addressed. And the, and and if because I know how these things work, somebody's going to watch this and say he's just a singer. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I do know this much. If you don't have a rigorous debate around any issue, that's a red flag. Because what's to be so afraid of? <laughs> that's my point. And where you see the lack of dissent in America and the suppression of an alternate voice, people calling for, you know, regulation of the web, you know, the internet quill switch, these are all really troubling signs because we're moving towards a sort of an agreed upon idea that no one's really agreed upon. Because the agreement can only come if there's rigorous debate, and there isn't rigorous. Debate. They create false consensus. Well, they create they create a false debate. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's a, a dumb artist versus a wacko guy who lives down here and thinks he knows what's going on, right? And that's the way they would marginalize us. Not a passionate person who's done a lot of investigation and self-made person who's you know, has some level of intelligence to look at the world from a particular angle, one of which is I've been allowed access into different corridors of power because of my success. I, I think the fact that you've been successful is the evidence of the fact we should listen to you. Look, I have seen this, and I'll actually take one issue with what you said. Well, I'm just a singer, and sure, what do I know? Most of the experts this appeal to authority that you see on the news, they don't tell you. You can look up each and every pundit. They have got a whole combine a whole special interest behind them with a talking point, and they're there. I mean, you, I can find a hundred academics right, for every I, academic they push. If I ever watch one of those shows, right, the minute it says foundation for, you know, one, I, that's it. I don't listen to that person. If they're a self-made person, you know what I mean, then they're worthy. Because no, that's who you. So, so you do have credibility. All right. Well, I, have I mean, you've run businesses, you've produced music. You've, you've had staying power for 20 years. I think I have credibility as an American. That would be my point. That, exactly. But, but I'm just saying, we always have this self-deprecation of, 
well, I'm just a radio talk show host, mm -hmm. you know, and like, well, well, I can go look up that the entire crew of the Coney, you know, 2012 movement is government funded and controlled mm -hmm. and that they want it and, and, and that the White House says it's going to be their plan to invade Africa. Mm -hmm. So right there, I don't have to be a PhD in something. If I catch somebody in bed with my wife, mm -hmm. I know they're on top of her in bed. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see what I'm saying? No, I, I, 